everyone, and welcome to the Sporting Global Podcast. And today we have the pleasure to have with us Joanne, all the way from London. How how are you, Joanne? I'm good, Oli. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm very happy to be here today and uh, to talk a bit more about what I do. Absolutely. Well, it's a pleasure having you here. And, and first of all, like, how's how's life in London these days? I heard it's been getting better, you know, and the situation is is on on the right foot, I guess. Well, it seems to be getting better, but we keep having sort of mixed messages from uh, the other place of the world. Like uh, recently, well, last night, in fact, my other home country, which is France, is. Uh, uh, put us again on quarantine and only essential traveling to go there. So obviously we're still thinking of what's going to happen in the close future, especially with the uh, European football starting soon. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, apart from that, the weather's just picked up. So we've got the nice and bright sunshine outside, blue sky, and we can see the temperatures rising. So right. it's all good. It's all good. So, so London <laughs> summer is coming ahead. <laughs> uh, it's been uh, it's been a while since we've had a bit of warm weather. In fact, I still have my jumper on just to give you an idea. <laughs> well, I mean, like we've been super lucky in Norway the last few weeks, at least like here. So I'm like wearing shorts. I mean, like I know my friends in California are not would would probably not wear shorts at at, at this temperature in Norway, but uh, but uh, for us it's it's practically summer. So I'm I'm happy. <laughs> Good. I'm glad for you. Well, I will wear my shorts when I see the heat. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a smart plan. But uh, for those of you that are tuning in, you know, and, and want to make sure that you, you get like t key tips from people like Joanne every week, you know, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and, and you will get that every week. So that's that's always good. So Joanne, like, I just want to know a little bit about sort of like how your journey in the sports industry began. Like take us kind of like a little bit back and, and sort of like how, how it all started for you. I got there, basically. Um, well, I started my journey in sport business or uh, education in sport business uh, literally eight years ago. So it's been a while, and time flies. Um, and I started um, basic, very basic teaching business English and coordinating uh, study trips uh, with Amos. Right. Um, at the time, they only had three campuses, so we had only very limited uh, uh, trips and opportunities at the time. Um, just to give you an idea, now we've grown and um, we've got so many study trips we can offer. So I've left that side of things and I moved on to, uh, to sort of managing a campus. But right. before I started, I already had a strong interest in sports and events. Um, I had my own events agency where I, uh, and I've got a strong uh, international background. So obviously I knew a lot about organizing events and marketing that, that way. Right. Um, I'm also very competitive. Um, I did French championships in gymnastics when I was much younger, obviously. There you go. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and I played university uh, volleyball um, in Scotland, uh, Glasgow Uni, uh, not Glasgow Uni, Strathclyde University, sorry, in Glasgow. Ooh. And our team was regularly uh, national champion. So I was very sporty. Yeah. Uh, um, I was working uh, as a self employed person at the time and marketing events, communications. Uh, and I was looking. Uh, for a new challenge and is ready to make a difference. Um, yeah, yeah. What better than education and sport business? Really exciting. Right. Um, yeah. And at the time, the school was just developing, as I said, three campuses, and the international department was uh, really developing fast and yep. it's had yep. developed a very strong fit. So I, I arrived really just at the right moment into this sort of new concept school because sport management schools were just non existent. It was awesome competitor yep. so yeah it was a right moment well i mean like it it, it it it's fun to sort of like see that sports passion all the way from the beginning you know and like leading that into like okay i want to make an impact and and, and as you said what's what's a better way to do it than being part of like you know something new and something different but within the within the sports education system so i'm sure that's been a quite a learning full experience as well from from from, from that angle i guess Totally. And um, I mean, I've always been driven to sort of competition and working with people. And uh, I've got this empathy side. You know, I like to help people. Um, I like to participate. And education was just perfect. And having that sport on the side and in a very interesting uh, industry. I mean, that sport business, what do you want? I mean, it's for me one of the best industries in the world. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, the passion is definitely something which brought me in there and the, the will to teach others, you know, to sort of share my knowledge and share my experience and uh, to build something with future professionals. 
Right. Well, I'm glad you can share some of your knowledge with with all of us today. So that's that's always okay. a, a good starting point. But I think I think that's that's a definitely a key you know element of like you know especially education system too of like yes. you want to help others. You know, like at the end of the day, like you're dealing with all these young people. You know, like trying to find their path. And and of course, we're gonna talk a little bit about that later. But 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 now, of course, like you're obviously the currently the the school director uh, for almost sport in school, but in sort of like like a London, London chapter, I guess, if you want to call it that. And if you want to like just map out, like what are, what are some of your like key tasks and res- responsibilities that you have right now? Okay, so it's quite an interesting journey because um, I started with the first international campus. Uh, it was the, f- the fourth campus to open, really, hmm. uh, altogether. Yeah, so uh, it's it was, you know, they wanted to test uh, implementing their programs abroad. So obviously I arrived and I had to build everything. So I started with, you know, I had a little office in one of our partner schools and uh, gradually sort of uh, had 60 students, then 200 students, 300 students. Now I get something like uh, 800 students a year. So right. it's grown. So obviously my responsibilities have been, I've you know, grown as well. Yeah. Uh, today, my, uh, sort of my, I've got a strong managerial role and strong leadership responsibilities. Uh, The fact that I'm bilingual, working in a multicultural company, uh, working in two languages, it gives me, you know, sort of uh, that experience and that knowledge um, and to to work it. And I've learned to be a manager all through these years. And it's great because when you build something, you grow, you build your your company, uh, you build your team. Um, So obviously my tasks have evolved over the time over the last six years now in London. Uh, And mainly my sort of, uh, my main role, my main objective is to implement the school uh, to fit the strategy of a group uh, and to sort of adapt to the rules of the uh, European accreditations associated with the programs. Right. So I have, you know, my main sort of three objectives here is to manage a syllabus so that yeah. it's the skills the students need to acquire right. um, to ensure, and that's important for me as well, students have a real student experience outside their home country mm-hmm. um, to discover a new culture, to manage a team and ensure that they all adhere to the same objectives. So that's right. basically my managerial role, okay, yeah. in terms of very briefly. Um, on top of that, there are objectives for the students, um, which are set by the fact that being abroad in a different country, they have to learn English, right. learn from the culture, they have to gain UK sports industry knowledge, uh, yeah. develop new skills because uh, transferable skills, obviously, um, right. know how to behave in an international environment. So all this is my role. It's very important that I have, you know, the knowledge and the understanding and, um, you know, sort of, uh, all the knowledge, as I said, the knowledge to do, to do so. And they have to become adaptable, um, open-minded and curious. And that's why I try to teach them here. Well, I mean, like, I, I think, uh, as you said, though, like, um, and, and sort of like having that adaptability and, and even in your role, right, from like where you began and like where you have now with the growth of Amos, you know, as a group too, and, and the international, um, you know, chapter, I guess, in London sort of like continuously growing, you sort of like have to adapt your, your tasks and roles. And, and I guess like also how in, in change with how the industry is moving forward. You know, and like the, the the technology and innovation and the adaption that are happening there as well. So sort of like building a little bit, a little bit upon that. Um, obviously, and if you just look at it from sort of like your lens, from like you know the London School itself, like what what have been like some of the challenges I guess you've been facing now during COVID and and like specifically for the programs and I guess like how have you sort of like overcome them or, or dealt with the situation I guess. Gosh, it's been difficult. Um, it's been difficult, just even just for us, because you know we had 300 students every ter- every semester coming on the campus, and suddenly no one, and we were switch- switching from face to face to uh, online classes. Yep. So my main challenge here was obviously to get the curriculum uh, delivered 100%, which we did. Um, yep. So that was a hard challenge, you know, getting everything set up. Uh, thanks to the technology, everybody got online. Uh, obviously you get a few quacks along the way, you know, people don't have, you know, uh, internet where they are because they might be very remote, but um, we still overcame the, the problems. For me, the main challenges, challenge was to keep the students motivated mm. and to us, 100%. Uh, 
because they were demotivated, their travel plans had been stopped. Um, London for them was the experience, you know, they, they arrive in their second year. Yeah. It's, it's new to them, uh, it's an excitement, and then suddenly everything closed down. Uh, so that was a huge challenge. Plus, obviously, you're being to the, you know, the politics around, you know, what they're doing here, what they're doing abroad, the decisions to make, right. making tough decisions, yeah. um, proposing alternative programs to the curriculum, adapting them. Um, that So for me, it was hard because you think you're doing great things, but on the other end, you've got students behind their screen and right. you want to keep this link. So it was really communicate, learning new communication skills as well right. for, for our right. end keeping my team motivated as well, because you know, when you're 300 and you turn down to six, five, and I've got a huge school, um, they can't go to France because most of my team are also foreign, they're French. Right. It's complicated, but um, on the other side, um, it was also an opportunity for us to sort of um, teach in a different way. Yeah. Uh, as again, again, we're talking about adaptability to right. adapt quickly. So thinking we're an international campus, We've got the English language as the main language spoken in the world. Yeah. We could open up, you know, um, conferences and extra classes, extra projects with right. international people based all around the world. So right. um, basically time zones are left. We just could yeah. do whatever we want. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and at the same time, I still have a few students here. Sometimes I had a group of 10 students who, because when they closed, opened up, we had some students right. who wanted to be here. Sure. So we, we did some hybrid classes, so some were online, some were face-to-face -face with the lecturers. Yeah. So it was sort of, um, in, we used the technology uh, as much as we could. Right. So we managed to keep a link with students here and uh, with those online because we had to interact with them in a way. Right. Um, so that was good um, because we developed a lot of things, uh, you know, we tried to think above and beyond what we were offering here. Mm -hmm. um, and we tried to keep, you know, our objectives is an education and the right skills and the right programs and everything. Right. So we delivered no, essentially it. Essentially, it's just your frameworks that that were had to be adapt, right, with the situation. Oh. And, and I think, like, you, you touched upon, like, something very key, which was, like, okay, how do you, you know, continue motivating these students that were like planning okay i was gonna you know live in london i was gonna you know explore london life and then just you know get that full package experience and, and i know how it is you know like i studied in san francisco so you know, you know like just going from norway like into a completely different country you know and just you want that full experience and and i think like you know having those kind of like extra initiatives that extra activity that just like keeps that you know trigger and that like reminder of like okay why are we here you know what is the key focus and like how are we you know helping these people in the situation in order to stay on top of their game because at the end of the day like you know it's it's gonna fall back to i mean like i guess the new normal where you know of course like more and more into the natural way of, of doing things and so uh, I was thinking like, of course, going a little bit back into and uh, now you've been with almost like almost almost eight years. And if, if you kind of like go a little bit back, I guess, like the, the, the last few years and, and I guess like what kind of changes have you seen, you know, in the education of sport management, which is sort of like been like almost this, you know, key key focus here. Uh, yeah. What, what have you seen of, of changes, I guess? Well, Changes, um, it's quite complicated. It's a difficult question. See, I'm talking about change because uh, life changes over eight years, any business changes. Right. Um, however, being eight years in an institution, what I've seen most is uh, uh, a surge in a lot of uh, sport management programs uh, in the world and especially in France, there's a lot of competition. Right. So obviously, more and more um, education schools, uh, private schools, even in, uh, public institutions are developing more and more uh, sport management programs. So that's obviously a big change. Obviously we have to sort right. of position ourselves, but we also have to be innovative. Um, and I'm looking for instance, just market, just business in general. Uh, marketing is typically an area where a lot of students want to go. You know, they want right. to work in marketing. You know, that's something right. they come, oh, I want to work in marketing. <laughs> but Today, and I'm, I mean, I've been talking to a lot of professionals, it's important to, um, to look beyond marketing, you know, and try and learn new skills to get into marketing, for instance. So mm -hmm. I would say that 
changes in how we uh, educate and the way we create our curriculum. So we have to look more at sort of how to position ourselves in the, in the market. So I would sort of look at developing sales skills, for instance, uh, and a lot of digital. And here, here I come to the point where changes uh, have been so quite drastic is the digital, obviously. Uh, in the last eight years, and even, you know, we've seen so many social networks uh, open up and develop. Uh, we've seen the world of sports changing into sort of the more and more digital. Right. Um, so there you are. Um, with the pandemic, for instance, uh, yeah. the digital has taken a huge impact. Um, for instance, keeping in, engaging the fans during a situation yeah. like this. So changes. I've seen the day with situations like this, but obviously with the evolution of time, the use of these, these networks, we've changed our programs to right. adapt to this, this process. And digital is obviously, we look at it every year, we sort of question professionals, they give us you know, the evolutions, teach new processes and so on. Uh, and sport is, you know, digital, digitalization of sport is, is huge. Um, and it obviously has an impact on education. Um, yeah. And, and as it should be, you know, because obviously, you know, you guys sort of like have to follow the trends of the industry, right? Because I mean, like you're educating the new leaders and they also need to know that, okay, um, you know, the same kind of roles that were here. And I mean, like even just look at it from like before the pandemic, like a year and a half ago, like there were so many roles there that people are implementing now because of like the change of like COVID yeah. and pandemic and how they have, how they had to look at all these elements. So I guess like that also impacts, you know, what kind of speakers are you bringing in? What kind of like topics are you discussing? What kind of, you know, key elements? And, and as you said, like, you know, everyone wants to, be, wants to be part of marketing, but also if you dig deeper into marketing, you realize that, well, there's a lot of sales there. There's a lot of t digital elements in there. There's, there's, there's a lot of factors. And then again, there's a room and an ocean of opportunities that are increasing. Data. I mean, now we use data is uh, is huge, and the content. Yeah. How to use data, statistics. It's all digitalized. Um, we use data and statistics in, in different forms. So all these companies are so exploring uh, football statistics, and you know, so right. it's it's really really important that we know and, and learn about all these innovative uh, ways of you know uh, doing business. Right, and you can kind of argue as well, like even like. If you look at the gaming industry too, like with the uh, sports interactive with like football manager, I mean, like you can technically call it a data company because they're literally based on feeding like their system with like tons of data from like player statistics and all this stuff. And people are evaluating that. Right. So it's, it's kind of like just, okay, how do you look at it and just open, open up that uh, sport business lens on it for the students to understand there, the, there's much more into it than just, you know, supporting the team, the, the players, and what's involved with that. It's it's taking a step back, a, a deeper look, and understanding, like, the key factors of how you make this machine run, you know? So mm -hmm. it, it, it's, a, it's a fascinating process. And and I guess, like, since we're diving now into sort of, like, the, the students and the sport professionals and, and, and that are kind of, like, now sitting here and, like, just thinking, like, well, there's a lot of opportunities though in, in the sport, you know, related fields. And, and I guess like from, from your side, you know, just, just, I guess at a natural, natural level, like what kind of key points, you know, should they have in the back of their mind when they're exploring their options? Like what are some of the key things that they should think about? Well, they should, uh, well, one thing we forgot to talk about in the, the, the previous part was also uh, the sustainability side of things, you know, right. sport. So they have to look at what's happening today and what's going to happen in the future. So for me, it's essential that when they look for a program, the students, they have to sort of um, be aware of what's happening in the market. Okay. Um, what's better than having industry experts, you know, teach them um, all along the way. So having theory is one thing, but having, you know, real people with real problematics, with hands-on experience, explaining how things are developing in the industry is essential. So when they want to sort of um, look for a sport related program, they should look, I would think, exploring who's gonna teach them, how they're gonna approach the market, um, how, gonna, how are they gonna sort of implement uh, solutions. Um, so more skill-based programs um, with hands-on experience. That's, that's very, very important. Um, so that's why I believe that you have industry experts there and you also have real problems to, do, to look into and obviously, 
innovation. Um, today, uh, you're talking about gaming, um, esport, betting, all these sort of uh, innovative way of um, using data and creating new jobs and creating new opportunities and uh, new sort of uh, new capital. Okay. Um, so they have to sort of, you know, be open minded, um, want to learn as much as possible, uh, not just, you know, marketing and basic modules, but exploring a lot of things. Um, plus, if a student wants to learn more, I think he has to have a, a global point of view, okay, a global vision, mm -hmm. uh, understanding how different cultures interact, how to use, how they use different systems, how they work together. Um, so it's, it's very important that there's in programs, innovation, uh, global vision, understanding, uh, working with professionals, that's very important. And when they're exploring programs or universities or schools, uh, they should also look for um, places where they've got some sort of support to help them, you know, reach their, um, their career choice or help them towards their career plan. I think like that's exactly what you're doing at Sporting Global. You're, you're helping students to sort of right. um, help them in their career choice and uh, finding the right sort of uh, person and the right skills. So that's why it's, it's very important today to have this career sort of center or support around that um, with that global vision, obviously. Um, I, I think you're touching upon like a really important thing of having that practical perspective in mind, you know, like obviously, you know, there, there's a lot of knowledge out there and there's a lot of, you know, insights and, 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 and data and, and research that you can learn. But again, like tying that into like, okay, what is actually happening in the industry, like getting that hands-on experience, like, and, and knowledge from people that are, you know, working there right now and saying, okay, this is what, what the trends look like in, in three to five years, you know? So also as students, they can kind of like, you know, get, education system that are supporting of course like those trends but at the same time they have a ability to building network to kind of like getting getting their foot in the door and and i guess in, in a sense as well like exploring their options because i think a challenge for many students which has been kind of like a key factor is that people want to work in sports, but they have no idea where, you know, it's sort of like, oh yeah, I want to work for like the, you know, the major team, you know, which is very like typical, right? Exactly. Like, exactly. Everyone wants to work for like Barcelona, Manchester United, like, exactly. you know, well, whatever Barcelona, it is. You name yeah. it. I know it's important that they explore. I mean, they have to try a lot of things um, yeah. and they have to, you know, they have to broaden their knowledge about the industry. So they have to touch uh, at a lot of things very very good uh, what you were saying uh, it's exactly what i was thinking um and what i recommend to all the students they want to work in events said fine events is great but you know it's tiring yeah. this it's that um you should just just go in the field try it you know yeah. do it see if you fit um try something else you know you have to touch base right. touch a lot of things and then you'll you'll learn where your skills are and what you like doing yeah, no, 100%. And I think, you know, as a student as well, and I don't think this is being pushed enough. And, and that's sort of like the way where I see, you know, a student experience should be like about, um, first of all, like, see if you fit in that industry. Like, if, if this is something that you really want to do, because I think sports has that, it, it's a very glamorous industry from the outside, right? And then once you're sort of like inside, you sort of like realize how much effort and time and, and you know, you need that passion in order to make it work, right? And, okay. and it's usually like low paid and all this stuff until like, of course, like you do very well or something like that, but it, it, it's very passion driven, right? So first of all, like, do you fit in sports, right? That's, that's one question. And then the second is like, have like, take a chance to like, try a lot of different verticals, like events, marketing, you know, business sales, you know, like digital, like explore your options because you know, in a sense that will also help you provide a better understanding of the industry okay. as a whole and more easily, I guess, find your path, you know, because not everyone, like most people don't know exactly where they want to go or like, what's their ambition. When I started, I mean, when I, when I was 19, I went to university, I, I didn't know what to do. So right. I thought I'll do business because it's wide, you know, I'll do business and I'll see what I like in business. I'll use, you know, so my uh, my PR talents, uh, I'll see what I'm good at, you know, and right. what aspects of the business I like. And it's gradually when you try things that you start learning and things you like, like doing, and then you, your passion obviously will drive you. And the more passionate you are, the better you are at your job anyway. 
Right, hundred percent. So, so if you now though, like, sort of like to wrap it up, if you want to like key highlight some like some key tips for any student out there that are like, okay, I want to work in sports. This is what I'm trying to do. Like, what, what kind of like where should they start? And like, what is your what is your key tips from your? Okay. Okay. <laughs> There's it's quite a few tips. Um, Adaptability is one thing. So in order to be adaptable, you need to sort of explore. You need to sort of, if you can, travel as much or try, you know, sort of testing new cultures. Um, uh, gain, as much <laughs> gain as much experience in the, uh, we just said it, gain as much experience in um, different fields, okay, of sport and roll out your network. So that's essential. So the more you work, the more people you'll meet, the more network you'll have. Mm -hmm. So networking is very important, but you have to be curious, you know, and you have to be knowledgeable. That's it, very essential. If you don't have any knowledge, what's the point? Yeah. And again, um, you have to be tolerant and very open-minded. Um, sport is, as you say, it looks very sexy, but you need to have an open mind, okay? You have to understand uh, that you go into this business, but it's not just, as you say, uh, sparkles and, uh, uh, and bright lights. Champagnes and everyone's celebrating with the, when they win their, their Champions League final, as most teams doesn't. <laughs> exactly, you have to start small and work your way up. Uh, in fact, it's very British to say that. A lot of um, British people, you know, they start with a job and then they gradually work their way up. Um, I think if you just put some achievable goals, you know, mm -hmm. gradually you have a few goals uh, and you go slowly and you reach them, okay? Uh, and then you can move on, move up gradually uh, and be passionate, especially uh, in your job. Once you've, you've got this little passion, this little spark, keep on to it. You have to do that, um, but... You are. You have to do a lot of things, several things, and then we go back to the networking. And my final, uh, my final uh, advice is try and speak more than two languages because now, I mean, a lot of people are working remotely more and more, mm -hmm. so we have access to the world. Uh, so meaning access to the world means access to different cultures. So English is a must. It's not just even a question now, it's a must. Yeah. English has to be there, but if you speak a third language, it's more than advisable. So there well, you are, that's what I, uh, I would advise. <laughs> well, Joanne, I think it's the perfect way to end this podcast with, you know, with some key final advice for anyone out there that are looking for a career in sports. And if you were able to join us all the way at the end, you know, make sure to like the video, you know, maybe write a comment like where you want to work in sports and maybe who you want us to interview next. And, and don't forget to subscribe so you'll get key tips every week. And with that, Joanne, I would like to thank you so much for taking the time. And it's been a pleasure thank having you. you part of it. I enjoyed it. And if I can help more and if the students, you know, if they can go into my network, you know, I've got a good, good network. They want to ask me questions. I'm very approachable. So um, I like speaking to people. So if they want to speak to me or text me, email me, I'm more than happy to answer their questions. Absolutely. Well, as as we are a Norwegian startup and company, we always finish with something Norwegian. So I got to learn you a little bit Norwegian today. <laughs> so with every video we do, we always finish with this knockis, which means see you later in Norwegian. Okay. A bientôt. A bientôt. Yes. <laughs> I got it. All right. Cool. <laughs> Thank you so much, John. We'll uh, talk soon. <laughs>